I Testify is about testifying of what Jesus Christ has done and can do in each of our lives. Through testimony of people just like you and through study of his word, our prayer is to encourage each follower of Christ to be a light in this world. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Hi, welcome to I Testify. We have our guest with us, Anthony Baca. He's the Associate Director of Souls West. Souls West is the Pacific Union Conference's College of Evangelism, and he also works as the Volunteer Literature Ministry Director of the Arizona Conference. And Anthony's here to share about how he went from atheist to not only being a believer, but involved in ministry. Anthony, how did that happen? That's a very good question. It goes back to when I was a child. I was born into a family that wasn't really a practicing um, Christian family. Years later, we, they would eventually go to church. It would take me for a couple of years. And through some unique circumstances, I would decide to make the decision at the age of 13 to be an atheist. Mm -hmm. I decided that religion wasn't something that appealed to me. It wasn't something that I really would believe in. Um, it was something that I didn't think the adults around me that professed to be Christians even believed in. Mm. And so as I bridged more into high school, 14 and 15, um, took a biology class, that actually solidified for me. Mm. And mm. I decided just to continue to go down the road of atheism. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily the, do you think it was partly the lack of information you had about what the Bible had to say, or was it the demonstration of what Christians we're acting like that really made you think there's not much to this religion? That's a good question. I think it's a combination of both, actually. When I was uh, being going to church at the age of nine, mm -hmm. around that time, there was an individual who I went to who was associate pastor, and I asked him for a Bible study, actually. I had found an old, dusty Bible in a family hope chest. And when I remember asking him for a Bible study, he looked at me and said, the Bibles are for adults. Bible studies are for adults. So just go back to Sunday school and don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and specifically, I was asking to understand the book of Matthew. Mm. And hindsight, thinking back, I really believe that angels were prompting me to get to know Christ. Because mm -hmm. I would hear the stories. You know, you'd hear things as a kid as you're starting to go to church again. Uh, but I didn't really know anything about him. So there was a lack of knowledge in, for sure. And uh, later on, years later as an adult, when I would come to be a Christian, I didn't know any of the stories. I didn't know any of the concepts. And so I'd hear these stories and they're so fresh, so new. And I always wondered, what if I knew this when I was younger? Would it have made a difference? Mm -hmm. um, but secondly, the uh, demonstration of Christianity was also lacking. Mm -hmm. The adults around me that I would see would be one way at church. And as kids, we would go to each other's houses and be able to spend time with each other. And I get to see who people really were in their homes, mm -hmm. deacons, elders, ushers, even pastors. And sometimes I would question uh, by things said or things done, uh, do they really even believe the things that they mm. tell me um, during Sunday church service? Mm -hmm. Sure. So now you're a committed atheist in your mind after taking these biology courses, and you somehow ended up, what, finding religion on your own? <laughs> I first had my re-interaction with religion, I guess, in a positive context, because I would have negative interactions with Christians all throughout high school and college, was I was actually, believe it or not, watching HBO. And I know you would think, what good thing can come from HBO? But remember, the Bible says, what, what good thing could come from Nazareth? All right. And I remember I was watching HBO, and there was a documentary. And these scientists were talking about different fields of science. And their conclusion at the end of this movie was, it's more logical and rational to believe in a divine creator of some sorts um, than not. Wow. Mm. And it wasn't Christianity. They weren't saying be a Christian. Right. But they're just saying the way uh, the human body is, the way uh, the cosmos are, mm. it just seems more rational and logical that there's a creator behind it than mere chance. And that was my first positive Experience, and I say positive, not that I was going to be a Christian all of a sudden or religion. I actually thought the movie was kind of dumb when I first saw it. <laughs> Two weeks later, it came on again. I watched the whole thing from beginning to end this time. Mm -hmm. I even took notes uh, mm -hmm. to think through their arguments. Wow. And at the end of it, I thought to myself, 
Obviously, I don't believe in this stuff, but that was the first educated Christian I've ever heard speak on the subject of why they believe in God. So then this idea now has been, in, it's been introduced Exactly, yeah. It's been introduced to me in a very positive way. Yeah. Uh, and because I think the way I kind of bridge more into my disbelief in a God, especially particularly with my science classes and the individual teacher, it was interesting that now the scientists were yeah. saying the, quite the opposite. Yeah. And they were also using science as well. So it kind of made me a little uh, curious. Uh, and that was implanted. And I think the Lord would use that. Actually, I know the Lord would use that mm. in the very... Sh- uh, in the months to come. Mm. So my question is, did you want to, like when you, when you started seeing this evidence for Christianity, did you want to believe in that? Or were you more like, I don't know if I want to go down this road because I might need to change some things that I'm, that I'm doing yeah. in my life. And the reason that I ask you that is because my dad was an atheist as well. Mm. And for him, the reason he actually started studying the Bible was because he wanted to show my mom, who was a believer, that it didn't make That's any wrong. sense. Mm. Right? And so that was the mindset that he went into it with. So I'm just curious if you came from a more skeptical mindset or you're like, man, I'm excited about this and I hope it's, I hope it's true. Extremely skeptical mindset. Okay. Yeah, I came into it not hoping, I guess, it was true. And I think you, you nailed it. It's... Um, I liked my life the way it was. Mm. I liked the, the scenes that I was involved with. I liked the things I ate, the things I drank, the people I hung out with. And in my mind at that time, uh, the thought of it being true would mean an entire reformation of the life. I wouldn't have known that word then, but I know that we're, I know that we're now. It would require change. And that was something that at the time, if you would have just came and posed that change to me, that this is the Christian life, would you want to live that way? I would have said, absolutely not. Right. Mm. And so I was very skeptical um, and it was interesting, it was only because I had providentially bumped into a friend by the name of Genesis um, that that movie came to any fruition. If it wasn't mm-hmm. for him, um, I would have saw the movie, it would have fizzled out of my mind, and then I would have went on with life as normal. But the same month I saw the movie, I had bumped back into my friend Genesis, who I hadn't seen for quite some time. We knew each other back in high school and junior high, and he was a uh, practicing Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Mm-hmm. And so interacting with him and spending time with him would eventually lead to an experience that would help me to get to know God. And what was that turning point for you? What, what did it look like? November 2006, uh, my birthday, Genesis invited me out to dinner. And he knew I loved stars. I loved to go look at the stars in the mountains. So he took me to this place in Loma Linda to go stargazing. There was only like one or two stars because Loma Linda, but uh, <laughs> it was the thought that really counted. And we went and we're watching, looking at the star. We're just talking. We're having a good time. And I don't know what it was, but the thoughts from that movie came back because they talked about, a lot about the cosmos, a lot about the stars, a lot about planets, a lot about the universe, the beginning of time itself and things of this nature. And I remember looking at the stars with Genesis and saying, I saw a movie you would like. Mm. You would love it. You're a Christian, right? You're still Christian? He said, yeah. I said, you would love this movie. And I explained to him the concept of the movie, what they talked about and what their conclusion was. He in turn asked me, well, what do you think? Mm. I just told him, I I, I didn't know. I said, I thought it was interesting. Mm. His response, now Genesis is a very phlegmatic individual by nature, doesn't like confrontation. And I think in this moment, the spirit of God spoke through him. Mm. Because it was a very confrontational thing to say to an atheist. He said, I think God is calling you back. Mm. You see, Genesis knew when I was a child that I went to a Christian church. And throughout uh, junior high and high school, he had invited me to his church. And I would never go. Absolutely not. Not just because of his church. I didn't even know what church it was at the time. I just didn't want anything to do with church anymore. Mm. And I remember... Hearing him say that, and I thought to myself, maybe. (laughs) And Genesis kind of, uh, during our conversation, don't remember the exact language used, kind of described this concept of, if God were real, would he not be trying to save you? Hmm. And I thought, well, if he were, hypothetically speaking, not saying he is, yes. And if Satan were real, wouldn't he be trying to keep you from God? Again, hypothetically speaking, yes. The conclusion was, when's the last time you saw something on HBO that showed you God exists or tells you God exists? Mm. I loved HBO. (laughs) (laughs) I told him never. He said, I don't believe in chance. Mm. I think God's calling you back. Why don't you go back to church? 
And in that moment, I don't know why, I said, sure, I do it. And I was kind of even shocked myself that I was willing to do that. But I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go to church. Uh, Genesis then kind of discouraged me a little bit because I was going to go back to my old church. And he said, you know, people don't know you. Uh, or no, people do know you. They know the life you live. They know the sins you've committed. They know the, the wild things you've done. Um, it'll be kind of hard to go back there, kind of embarrassing. I thought, yeah, you're right. I don't know if I can go back to that church. Mm. And he says, so why don't you come with me to my church? No one knows you. <laughs> I know it's a different church. Now, we don't do Sunday. We do Saturday. Yeah. He's, I said, I don't doesn't matter to me. It could be Wednesday at that time. It didn't matter at all. <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll go. And he said, there's free Filipino food. Oh, there it was. So I, I decided to make the decision. I am going to go to his church. Now, I put it off for the next four weeks. I had a really bad habit of partying and drinking on Friday nights. So waking up early on Saturdays was almost virtually impossible. Um, I usually would pass out from the party around four o'clock in the morning and wake up sometime in the afternoon. Um, and so for the next four weeks, I put it off, didn't go. Uh, first Sabbath in 2007, I remember laying in bed and my eyes open and I remember thinking, I need to go to church. Mm-hmm. And I just got in the car and I went. Wow. Yeah. So did you have, did your friend Genesis then direct you to start studying the Bible um, in any particular way or how did you actually start to learn more about God then at that time? Yeah, it's interesting because it, it it didn't quite happen for a couple of months, even going to church. Uh, the first day I went to church, I remember, I still remember very vividly going to church for the first time. And at the, at the time, when I walked into a church, you knew I was not a regular church attendee. I, I didn't wear, you know, things like this. Mm-hmm. I don't even like wearing them now, but I <laughs> kind of do. But um, I remember wearing, I used to wear all black. I had the chain. It's going. I like to wear my chain wallet and my chains on my side. I rode a, rode a motorcycle, so I like my motorcycle. Uh, I was very hairy and I was 400 pounds. And so I was a very, a very different individual and I always had an angry look on my face. I always had this look that I just wanted to fight somebody for whatever reason it was. I just wasn't a very happy person, I guess you could say. And I remember I came to church and the greeter met me and brought me in, sat me down and I had the chance to get familiar with the church, sit there for a few minutes and began to, to sober up a little bit because I had been drinking the night before mm. and I had passed out at four in the morning. I then realized that my leg um, was covered with dry vomit. Well, you had smelled something first, right? That's true, actually. You're right. I remember I had smelled something, and it was a B, the smell of B.O., the smell of, like, bad body odor. <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself, because it, it, it was a Filipino church, and I wasn't sure, I had not really interacted with much <laughs> Filipinos, that maybe it's like, you know, different homes have different smells. Hispanics, we have fabuloso. That's what our houses smell like. Um, different houses, different people have different smells. And so I wasn't sure what was going on. Eventually, I realized that the body odor was my own. Um, and, that, and I thought to myself, did I shower? And I realized I didn't shower. I rolled out of bed and jumped in the car and just went to church. And I remember thinking, that's not good. And you're right in the middle of like a pew with everyone. Yeah, I was actually in the, back, in the last row. Okay. Uh, but I was uh, a few people in and there were people sitting on my side. Genesis was on my right and I have no idea who was to my left, but there were some poor souls sitting right next to me. Um, but it was precious because they sat next to me. Mm-hmm. You know, too often we see people like that come in our churches and we don't sit next to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know who they were, mm-hmm. but I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And as I begin to have a, my heart, my heart uh, rate increase from nervousness, I'm a very shy guy, so that was not uh, a type of thing that would make me want to stay or be excited about being there. I would then begin to sober up more and realize the dry vomit um, on my legs. I would also recognize the smell of cigarettes on my, and alcohol mixed on my breath. Um, I noticed that I was also covered in dirt. I used to uh, party on a farm, specifically a farm with my brothers and friends. And when I got home the next day, I asked, why was I covered in dirt? And they said, oh, it was because you passed out and you like crawled home through the dirt. Um, and we just left you in your bed. We came back and thought, he's gone. Where did he go? And I was sitting in church like this. Wow. wow. Um, mm-hmm. I tried to leave the church quickly. I left early and the greeter caught me on the way out. Uh, the greeter had greeted me when I came in. Mm-hmm. And I tried to get past her, but she kind of stopped me, came up to me and gave me the biggest bear hug. Mm-hmm. And she said, thank you for coming to church today. We're so thankful that you came. And uh, we hope that you can come back again. She also invited me to eat with her. I declined. Um, I went home. And for the whole week, I thought, why did she hug me? Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't have hugged me if that was my own son. <laughs> um, I was a very disgusting looking. Mm. 
and she hugged me mm. and didn't make any flinch about it. Would you say that was for you where you realized that you wanted to learn more about, about God, about the Bible, or what took you, what took you the next step to bring you um, mm. into the church and in, in a relationship with Christ? Yeah, so it's interesting. Because of her, I actually was angry. Um, it's weird because I was angry because I couldn't figure out why she hugged me. Mm -hmm. So I kept going back Sabbath after Sabbath looking for her, never to find her. She apparently was a visitor, so I never got to see her again. Uh, she just volunteered that day. But I kept going back. So I was like, I wanted to figure out more about why she hugged me. Mm -hmm. After a few Sabbaths, I would have a, a very unique experience that time wouldn't allow to go through. Um, but at the end of this unique experience, I remember asking Genesis, uh, for a Bible study. I said, you know, you, you guys believe in the Bible. I don't know anything about the Bible. Can you guys give me a Bible study? There happened to be a young man that had just returned from Bible college recently um, mm -hmm. to the church. And so I got to sit down with him and I studied Daniel chapter two for the first time. And we got to go over the prophecies as an evidence for belief in the Bible and belief in God. Mm -hmm. And I remember after that Daniel two Bible study, and going through it, and I was, I, I asked questions, I was very curious, you know, I, and I had to double check when I went home to make sure those kingdoms were the right kingdoms, mm -hmm. and they weren't trying to pull a fast mm -hmm. one on me, and mm -hmm. I realized uh, when I went home, everything seemed to match up, mm -hmm. and that night in 2007, it was probably the fifth Sabbath, I think it was, or maybe sixth Sabbath, I remember going out into my backyard in Mentone, California, looking up at the starry sky and saying my first genuine prayer of my entire life. Mm. And I waved at the sky <laughs> and I said, hi, <laughs> you must be God. <laughs> I'm Anthony, but you already knew that. Mm. I'm sorry for being a fool my whole life and I can't wait to get to know you. Yeah. Mm. So Daniel 2 was a major turning point for me. Um, after that, I would be, begin to study the Bible for eight hours a day for the next two years uh -huh. um, to try to mm -hmm. understand the content within. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And you felt like at the end of that time period that you had learned it well enough that you were convinced you wanted a relationship with, with Christ? You know, I was convinced of that um, sooner than that, actually. It was about six months later I got baptized. Okay. Um, but I continued to spend the next year and a half after that. You know, I, I thought of Paul... And, you know, his wilderness experience where he just dedicated that time to reviewing and uh, rehearsing and studying the scriptures. And I really wanted that for myself. Mm -hmm. So I dropped off every ex extracurricular activity. I was, in, I was in the street racing at the time and a bunch of other things at the time. And for me, I just needed to dedicate. I had to work. Obviously, I had to make my paycheck. Mm -hmm. I had to work. But after, outside of work, it was the scriptures and nothing else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was all that mattered for those first couple years because I knew nothing I mean, people would talk about this guy getting eaten by a big fish. Yeah. And I had no idea what they were talking about. I was like, that's in the Bible? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. that's weird. <laughs> so I had to really dig deep uh, for myself to know what was going on in the scriptures. Because if I was going to believe it, you see, when I, was, uh, when I was an atheist, one of my first arguments against any Christian was, have you read the Bible cover to cover? Mm -hmm. And if they said no, I said, how do you believe something that you yeah. have not read yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be that guy. Absolutely. And so I made sure that I committed myself, because I had atheistic friends, mm -hmm. to knowing the Bible for myself mm -hmm. so that I could give an answer when they had questions. I so. re really appreciate how um, you study the Bible, too. I love it, and I have adopted it after, um, after you came and, and you shared it with us, because it, it's so simple. And it's just read a verse, ask those questions, who, what, why, when, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where. Just, Amen. I mean, a child could do it. Yeah, and it should be that way too. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. And the the answers that you get just straight from reading the text and asking yourself those questions, you you really get to understand the verses so much more and just going verse by verse. I just really appreciated that about you. Why don't you re Amen. repeat the questions so that way yeah. I don't know if we could hear you quite well. Who, what, why, when, when, yep. where. Those basic <laughs> questions. Yep, yep. Yeah. Just letting the text speak for itself, drawing yes. out of the text what the text says and not assuming it says what it does not say mm. uh, has been the most helpful. So I'm glad you were blessed by that. Yeah. So what are, what are some of your favorite texts that you could share with us that you think kind of encapsulate your journey that you'd like to you know, leave us with? Yeah, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, um, I think is a great text to start with to kind of summarize or encapsulate uh, my experience with God. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse Three. Mm. So that's Jeremiah. We're going to look at the third verse of chapter 31. 
And this verse, I, I didn't know this verse for quite some time. I, I read through the Bible, uh, but it was not for about a year, at least of being a Christian, until I finally came across this verse. And it says, the Lord has appeared to him from afar saying, indeed, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Mm -hmm. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Mm -hmm. This verse means so much to me. I do not know if I would have been so open to that Daniel 2 Bible study had that woman not hugged me. Mm. Yeah. You know, often we think of ourselves as the one taking the first step in the plan of salvation. I have to do something. Mm. But it's interesting, this text tells me that it's God that takes the first step. Mm. That he finds some way to reach you where you're at and to then draw you with his everlasting love mm -hmm. toward himself. I mean, even Jesus said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, this is one of my favorite texts for that reason, mm -hmm. that God had the ability to draw me with that loving kindness. And it also helps me to know if I want to reach others who are like me or in, in different situations, mm -hmm. I should probably start with that concept saying, God, let your loving kindness shine through me so that you can draw them to yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that woman who hugged you had God's love abiding in her. You'd have to to hug me in that condition. <laughs> you would have to. You know, it makes me think of um, Romans chapter 12 and, and verse 3. Um, and actually, in particular, the, the second, the, the ending part of that verse mm. where it just says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Mm. And so I think that, you know, to me, God puts that measure of faith in each one of us. And, you know, he even talks about earlier in Romans, you know, the, the, the attributes of his creation are mm. clearly seen, right? And so everybody kind of knows that in their heart to some level. Yes. Now we're polluted by the culture and everything that we learn, biology courses, whatever it might be. <laughs> But we have that measure of faith, and so then God reaches out, like you said, and he draws us, he appeals to that measure of faith that we have. Yes, that's right. And it's interesting because he draws us, but, you know, Isaiah 118 says, come, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he draws us in with that loving kindness, but he will also reach you and give you the evidence that you need in order to take that step of faith. I think of Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Uh, we can turn there. I can uh, share that one. It's a really powerful text. It's actually the first two verses in the Bible I read for myself. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 were the first two verses of the Bible study on Daniel chapter 2 that I had. Mm. And the Bible says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my good pleasure. Mm. Here God is saying, I am God and there's none else. That's a big claim to make. But then he gives an evidence to back that claim. Mm -hmm. I can declare the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what prophecy does. It's one of the purposes of Bible prophecy from my studies is to separate the true God from all the false gods. Mm. Even in John 14, 29, Jesus says, I tell you before it comes to pass, that when it does come to pass, you might believe. Mm -hmm. It gives you a chance to build faith within your heart and to accept mm -hmm. God as the true God. And for me, it was good that God drew me with loving kindness, but eventually I would have always wondered, how can I, have, how can I know? How can I have some evidence? Mm -hmm. And that's just the type of person I was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God met me with that through that Daniel 2 Bible study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. of a verse in Isaiah um, 55, uh, 11. And when you talk about your experience, it makes mm. me think of this. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Mm. In verse 12, it says, For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Mm. And it just makes me think of, you know, God has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. And then he went and accomplished it. And you went with joy out to talk about it. And we all are here listening to your testimony. So it's kind of a beautiful thing. So, Amen. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Because, yeah. you know, the, the first impulse of a converted heart 
is to then go mm -hmm. and to share that with someone else. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't find something amazing and then hide it under a bushel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you find your favorite restaurant in town, the first thing you do is tell all your friends where that restaurant is. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's just the glow that we found something good or if it's to be a benefit to them, but we still share it regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same with Christ. You know, we have the great commission in Matthew 28. Go and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, this is the Great Commission, but it needs to stem from that individual who has been drawn by the love of God, mm -hmm. who has had that experience with God, who has their feet on that firm foundation. I know in whom I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then go share as Christ would share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anthony, we only have a couple minutes left, but mm -hmm. I think you definitely got to the point where you became a believer, but you've, you've come so far. Mm -hmm. and you've, you've not only just changed your trajectory with your career, where you're working in ministry, but you know, you said you used to be 400 pounds, you used to have an angry look on your mm. face, you know, you were just an unhappy person. Uh, did that just come overnight? How did that happen where you got to where you are now? You know, 2 Corinthians 3.18 gives a principle that by beholding you become changed. Mm. When I spend eight hours in the Word of God every day for the course of a year or more, you're going to be changed. You can't sit with Jesus and hang out with Jesus for eight hours a day and not change. Amen. Um, I, I attribute it to the Word of God. If anyone spends time in the Word of God consistently, the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I have had victory over deep addictions and struggles, mm -hmm. and it was all through Christ and the Word of God. So by spending time daily in the Scriptures consistently, which I believe is the key, um, it caused a transformation to take place without even thinking about it. Mm. I didn't think I was going to get healthier. I didn't think I should stop swearing or anything like that. Naturally, these changes just began to occur. Mm. And briefly, do you have any where that God is leading you now? Yes. It, it, God has been leading me to the Arizona Conference to, as a volunteer to help uh, revive and bring back the literature ministries to the conference. Mm. And so we're working with a ministry called Thrive. We helped start it in the Nevada, Utah Conference, and now Arizona is allowing us to bring it to that conference. Mm. And like Jesus in Matthew 4.23, he would go teach, preach, and heal the people. And so Thrive brings in all three aspects, to teach, to preach, and to bring healing to the community. Mm. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us. And um, if anybody's interested in Thrive, how can they uh, contact them? They can visit our website at azthrive.org. Mm. That's azthrive.org. And there are tabs that will help them to find all the information that they need to find. Okay, thank you. Well, thank, uh, Anthony, I appreciate your testimony, and I really um, will... Take these verses that you shared with us to heart. And for our viewers at home, I hope that you also enjoyed um, hearing what Anthony had to say today. If you are interested in donating to Thrive, as you mentioned, he gave you the information. You can also donate to LLBN, and you can go to LLBNTV.TV, uh, sorry. And you can also... Um, Pray for us, if you will, for our ministry and for those uh, in the community. If you're interested in, in being involved, this is a great way to do it.